Uh, so the next presentation is about uh, I have to present uh, uh, DJSS and SNMP attacks. Uh, so I have to say that. Now we can carry on with uh, my presentation about security at the kernel level. Uh, this is about uh, this is to explain you that uh, the kernel has uh, something to do in security. That uh, when you do want to do security, you the kernel has the, uh, its role to play in a security policy. Uh, so I, I don't see my screen, so I'll have to to, to look at the uh, those screens. Uh, so I have uh, divided my presentation in three parts. The first one is about uh, why doing security in the kernel. Um, some people may might think that kernel is only uh, done for the machine to work, and uh, security is uh, must be done uh, elsewhere with uh, other applications. But uh, I'll try to explain and convince you that uh, things uh, can and must be done at the kernel level. Uh, then there will be a part about how to achieve uh, such security, and uh, the third part will be about some uh, implementation that exists. Um, and uh, okay, so the first part is uh, we'll begin with uh, some context. Then uh, I will introduce some kind of new security model. Uh, in fact, it's uh, another way to see uh, security, and uh, conclude on this. So, uh, as you all know, uh, there, is, there are things we'd like to, to be protected from. So, all those kind of nasty stuffs. And uh, for that, we must ensure three words you all know well, which are confidentiality, integrity, and uh, availability. And what we do to ensure that is that uh, we define a uh, a set of rules that uh, describe the way we handle, uh, protect, and distribute information. And this is what we call a security policy. And uh, to enforce our security policy, we use uh, security software. We use other things, but it is part of uh, the things we use. And some to, for do, uh, to do integrity checks, some to do uh, confidential to ensure confidentiality, and some to to do authentications. But the real question is that uh, can we trust uh, those softwares? Uh, to explain you uh, these things, uh, there is a little analogy. Uh, so let's imagine that we have uh, an house uh, with some cookies into this house, and we have mice that will try to eat the cookies. And uh, all that we want is to protect the cookies from the mice. So uh, I propose you two solutions. The first one is to try to to prevent mice to get into the house, uh, filling every hall, closing doors and windows. And the second solution is to put the cookies in a metal box. So uh, what I will ask you is to think two minutes about uh, which solution will be secure, which will be not. Uh, if you try to think about that, uh, we, you will quickly find that you can't answer the question easily and uh, that uh, securing the, the house is very uh, hard and you won't be uh, sure that uh, the house is well secured. Uh, but the solution with a metal box is quite easily done. In fact, with the solution one, you can't be sure you have uh, filled all the wall. You can't be sure there weren't any mice in the house. You can't be sure, but the, the, you can't trust this solution. And with the solution of the metal box, uh, you have something you can audit it because it's very small. You can grasp it entirely. And this is uh, a better solution. So if you have to choose, I guess you'll choose the solution of putting cookies in the metal box. For the model, that's the same thing. Uh, we have, for example, a machine uh, with uh, the, the a big perimeter, which is, uh, in fact, the physical security of the machine. Uh, what we have in black and yellow 
is the last defense we put uh, usually on machines. And uh, for example, if someone can break in using, for example, Sunmail, it can uh, attack other piece of uh, software, and uh, he has gone into our last security perimeter. Now, if we use this model, uh, we have um, a smaller perimeter to defend. We have, uh, uh, of course, we try to prevent something to get into the machine, but once someone uh, has uh, succeeded into uh, getting into the machine, uh, we try to defend the kernel too, and uh, our last defense will be uh, the separation between user space and kernel space. So to use this model, uh, we must patch the kernel uh, first to protect the, the kernel itself so that we reach uh, a state where uh, the kernel space is uh, trustworthy. And then from the kernel space, we try to enforce uh, a security policy. We try to protect everything that is involved in the security policy or every data that is, uh, that is related to the security policy. Now, how can we do that? Uh, in fact, uh, the, the fact we, we, we decide that the kernel space is uh, a good space to a good uh, a good place to do that is that uh, in every computer uh, nowadays computers we have a memory management unit that will uh, do uh, a hardware separation between user space and kernel space and we will rely on this, this fact to um, to in fact being able to ensure that uh, everything from user space can't go into kernel space and uh, we will see in the first part that we can enumerate everything going from user space to kernel space and everything uh, that uh, can be done on, on the machine can be filtered because it is going through kernel space. Uh, then we will see uh, two parts on how to defend kernel space and on we could do to filter uh, in kernel space. So uh, this is a machine, this is a computer uh, and we have a human that will try to target some um, things like storage, program, FPGAs uh, of the kernel or another application on the that is running on the computer. Um, to, to reach uh, a target, it must go through some physical security layers, one which is a real, the real physical access to the machine. Uh, if you can go, if you can do that, uh, I mean with a screwdriver or anything, uh, he has one and you don't have to, I mean, you, it's the physical security is the first point, but it's not the point of this presentation. Uh, the second point is that you can go through the, an action layer, for example, the keyboard or uh, the network interface card to go through the kernel and uh, give commands to an application that is running in user space. So you can, uh, you can reach an application like that. Uh, from this application, you can reach, for example, uh, storage media or PROM or FPGAs. But as you see, we can we still go through the kernel. Then we can try to target another application. Uh, you see, yeah, there are two arrows. The arrow number the ten uh, can't exist on uh, architecture with a real memory management unit because it's not permitted in protected mode. Uh, you can try to target the kernel because the kernel is uh, is target too and we have to protect it. So we have seen that there are a lot of paths to, to reach the targets and uh, in fact uh, the, the fact we have a, a small perimeter to defend uh, make that we, we have not so many paths to, to protect. Uh, first, we will rely on an hypothesis is that we have uh, an interface without bugs that does not exist, but uh, it's an hypothesis and we must do that to, to carry on. And uh, for example, uh, 
as an hypothesis, we say that uh, each key you type on your keyboard will go through the kernel before giving an order to an application. And we will have as an hypothesis that uh, typing on the kernel can't make you take the control of the kernel. Uh, then we have some defense to, to achieve. Uh, attacks to the kernel uh, can go through uh, dev mem or dev k mem or insert, uh, loading modules into kernel space. There are other uh, ways to do so, we will see later. And uh, then, if we want to do fil if you want to filter uh, access to, I don't know, to to a storage media, uh, as we you can see, uh, everything goes through the kernel. So the kernel is a good place to filter that. So uh, a little parenthesis about uh, the bugless interface is uh, something that's a little my opinion. Uh, because uh, the mechanism you use to do uh, kernel programming make that um, make uh, it harder to do uh, programming classical programming faults, but uh, bugs are still possible. All the other classes of bugs, but uh, in fact, uh, the we did not have seen a lot of vulnerabilities on kernels. Uh, so the hypothesis is not true, but valid for us. Uh, then, how to protect uh, the kernel space when there is someone, uh, when there is an intruder uh, in user space? We have to block every uh, to 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 protect every entry point from user space to kernel space. Uh, there are few of them, and they are all. Uh, uh, granted by the kernel, so that's easy to block them. For example, this is uh, some kind of uh, some source code from the Linux kernel. You just uh, have to return uh, minus eperm to block uh, slash dev slash mem slash dev slash kmem or slash dev slash port. So it's very easy uh, to to hack into the code and block this kind of entry points. The same for the module insertion. You just have to return uh, minus eperm, and this entry point is blocked. So that's very easy to do uh, or to, to control. And then, uh, if you if we want to filter things, uh, we must protect. Uh, we have to to know what we want to protect. We have a few classes of things we want to protect. So it's what's in on memory, what's on disks, and uh, every programmable hardware like uh, recent CPUs, uh, PROMs, BIOS, uh, all this kind of stuff can be, must uh, have, uh, must be granted by the kernel to be completed. So how to protect that? Uh, we have to, as every queries are done through the kernel and through uh, system calls or device calls or uh, CCTLs, uh, we have to to modify their behavior and in a consist consistent manner to enforce uh, security policy. So. Uh, a good way to use um, is to use modular uh, architecture to control kernel calls, because uh, there are a lot of uh, con access control policies, and uh, our aim is to try to enforce a control policy that is uh, that is um, uh, that is. Um, I mean, you have a security, uh, security policy, and the security policy uh, will say you which access control uh, policy you have to implement. Are the, uh, as there are a lot, we try to be modular and to, for example, in a system call, we try to put an enforcer code. Uh, so it's a component that will go into the system call, and the enforcer component will ask the decider component uh, if uh, access must can be granted or not. And the, it's the decider component that implements the access control policy, and you can change it uh, as you want. So it's a way to do so. 
and it's a way uh, almost every software that do this kind of stuff works. So how to add uh, the enforcer code in a system call, for example, because you have to do so in, tri in a device calls too. Um, you have two ways of doing so. For example, we have um, uh, we have uh, the anatomy of system call. You have an application that uh, asks for a, syst a specific system call. Uh, the instruction pointer will go through a dispatching code that will decide which system call um, have been called, then give on to the system call that will do its job, and then go back to the dispatching code that will give the hand back to the application with the result. So we have two ways to to modify things. Either we patch the dispatching code and we go, uh, we, we catch every cause to a system call in one patch, or we patch every uh, system call, for example, open or kill, or things like that. So, an example of uh, system call interception. Uh, it's about it's uh, the code comes from Medusa DS9. Uh, so they put some a small piece of code in the dispatching code that call their own. Uh, uh, access control method that will uh, try to decide which uh, if the system calls that have been asked for uh, can be executed or not. So uh, there are some advantages. It's a very general system and it's low cost patched. As, as you see with only these 10 lines of assembly uh, you have intercept every system call in the kernel. The drawbacks is that you have some kind of duplication of every system call, because uh, each time you, you uh, an application asks for a, a syscall, uh, the code of Medusa will be executed, and then uh, the, it's another drawback is that uh, uh, the, the Medusa uh, function has to know which system call it was, try to decode parameters, try to check if there are no uh, no error in the parameters to interpret it correctly. And another problem is that it's architecture dependent, at, le at least on Linux. I think in BSD it's not so architecture dependent, but it's, uh, it's a drawback on Linux. Uh, another example is about uh, a system call modification. For example, from LIDS, uh, you have a function, and then you just patch it to to do the check to call the the decider component, uh, what we can see is that the decider component uh, can take arguments from uh, parameters that have been checked and decode decode it so that uh, you don't have to do twice these checks and decoding, and uh, you can put uh, the the code everywhere you want. Uh, so that it's very more powerful. Um, so uh, you you have great tuning power because you can alter the code to do almost everything you want uh, to modify the even the be you can even modify the behavior of the system call. For example, uh, uh, transfer transforming it to something that's uh, not so compliant but that's more secure. Uh, and drawbacks is that you have uh, about uh, 2,000 uh, system calls and a lot of them have to be patched and they have to be patched in a consistent manner to to reach uh, a consistent security policy. So uh, something that will be thrown in kernel is uh, the Linux security modules. So in fact uh, Linux security module is a patch the Linux kernel, and it's only uh, the the enforcer component. Uh, for example, it's a yellow line. It's uh, it has been put in a in a pa in a specific part of the system call, and it's just a call to a, to a decider component. And the decider component can be everything. It can be leads, it can be a security enhanced li Linux, it can be everything that uh, that is a conformant to to the the way uh, the the 
to the way the communication is, has been decided to be between the decider and the enforcer component. Uh, the name Linux Security Modules, uh, by modules you have to understand modular because uh, that means that, uh, that only means that you can have uh, a, a lot of decider components. Uh, then we will see some uh, implementations uh, that, ex uh, that exist. So there are a lot of projects that do uh, security at the kernel level. Uh, open wall is, I think, uh, one of the uh, the orders. Maybe there are others, but I, I don't know. GR Security, LIDS, Medusa DS9, RSBIC, Lomac, Security Nance, Linux, and there are lots too. They, are so, uh, they all work on Linux kernels. There are others that work on BSD, like Systrus. So open wall is not really uh, what I've presented. That is, uh, it's not something to do access control in the in the kernel. It's only a, a collection of security related uh, features. Uh, for example, there are some the famous non-executable user stack array and other things uh, related to security. Um, GR security, it's. Uh, uh, has begun with uh, the patch, uh, porting the patch from OpenWorld to 2.4 kernels, and then they added an ACL system which was called Oblivion. Then they switched to a process-based system that is very, that uh, looks like a LIDS system, uh, ACL system. They, uh, they also implement Packs, which is uh, another patch for Linux kernel to to protect uh, user space from buffer overflows and other kind of uh, of uh, bugs that could occur in user space, like uh, they do uh, stack address randomization, etc. Mm -hmm. Then there is LIDS. I don't go into details because uh, there will be a presentation tomorrow. Uh, so it does uh, self protection of the of uh, the kernel and LIDS itself, process protection, file protection, uh, some special kind, some special features to do online administration, other special features to do uh, to be able to rely only on kernel stuff. For example, a, a dedicated mailer in the kernel. I mean, if uh, you uh, if you someone break your send mail, uh, you can't rely on it anymore to send alerts. So there is a uh, a kind of mailer that works only in the kernel and that works for it. Uh, so this is uh, the way it works. I go fast. Uh, then there is Medusa DS9, which has an interesting concept that is um, there are uh, a lot of layers of abstraction and the decider component is in fact uh, a user space daemon. Uh, which will decide, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the, the enforcer component will ask through a device driver uh, to a, a user space daemon if something must be grounded or not. And the fact it's a user space daemon make uh, implementations of uh, access control policies very, um, very easy to do. It's just user space programming. You can do it uh, in shell if you want. Uh, but there is something in user space. And Medusa, yes, uh, Medusa rely on uh, the system call interception. Uh, RSBIC is um, something that's based on the GFAC, which is a generalized framework for access control, which is uh, a kind of access control. It's the same that uh, it's the equivalent of LSM. Um, and then there are a lot of uh, access control policies that have been implemented and that are um, that are uh, given in the form of loadable, loadable kernel modules. And there are a lot of uh, lot of them, like uh, Mac control policy, wall control, uh, functional control. One one which I like a lot of is that they uh, they have been able to implement a malware scanner in as a as a, a decider component that plug onto the the framework for for access control. 
it's something that will scan every every program you execute to check for virus or anything. So in fact, the 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 decider component can be very it can it can be it can do a lot of things. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, LOMAC. Um, it's something based on low watermark integrity. Uh, it's uh, something I, tr I find very cute. Uh, it's uh, for you have uh, an initialization. Uh, some specified directory are in a high level, and other directories and socket are low level. In fact, you have two conceptual levels, high and low, and there are rules that will uh, decide on what will be. I will be, uh, which processes will be high, which will be low, and uh, which process uh, which processes can do what. Uh, so processes are created from uh, uh, a high directory will be high. Processes created from a low directory uh, will be low. Uh, a high direct uh, high process can read a file in high directory, but a process a low process can't read what is in a high directory. And if high process read a low uh, file, it will become low. So that's that uh, that's uh, that's cute, I find. But there are some exceptions because something like that can't work. There might there must be exception. For example processes must uh, write to syslog, your logs must be high, so the syslog daemon must be high, but it must read something uh, which is low because the low socket, uh, because uh, every process must write into the log socket, and so that uh, syslog have to read a socket that is low. And there, there must be uh, some exception to make the model work. Then uh, security enhanced Linux is something that uh, that is uh, I find that Lomac is the little brother of security enhanced Linux, and uh, it's based on a very old, uh, I say very not old, but something that is 10 years old. Uh, the Flask architecture is 10 years old. They have worked a lot of in, on it. And uh, there is also an enforcer and decider component. Uh, no uh, security dance Linux can work on top of the Linux security modules. And uh, not like uh, the other project, they, are, they have worked on to uh, the revocation. That is, if you change the right of a process that, have, that has already been launched, the right will be... Um, Propagated to already running process, and they will be propagated right. And at last, the Linux security modules, so uh, they will be included very soon, and maybe they are included now. I I have not checked, and uh, they are in uh, 2.5, and it's uh, only a framework, and you can plug uh, access control policies as you want, and you don't have to compile them as module as the name suggests. You can uh, compile them uh, in a kernel. So that's all. So if you have any questions, uh, I think we don't have a lot of time, but... Uh, no, I think I was very clear. So thank you.